Being a fan of Star Citizen is pretty hard right now. Or rather, I should say trying to play Star Citizen is hard right now, as the latest 3.18.2 patch once again attempts to push the game into a more playable state with some pretty rough results. While Alright, enough teasing. Hello, I'm ELX987, and today we're going to be reviewing Level Cap Gaming's video on... I leave my fucking Discord call. Um... His video on... Star Citizen's latest 318.2 update. Um, the reason we're doing this is because... Because there's some key points that need to be discussed in this video that are ultimately missed or incorrect or some of it is correct, but uh, let's get into it and discuss the points as we go. Oh, wait, I'm not recording this. Oh, yeah, I yeah, am. Okay. i uh, logging into... The okay, yeah, audio's working. Cool. The game seems to be in a much better state than before. The in-universe experience fluctuates from kind of buggy to totally unplayable. For all intents and purposes, the persistent universe has become the persistent testing universe. I agree with this, but they haven't officially named it. CIG need to take account of that and actually fucking name it that. Thank you. Last week, CIG ran a free fly event inviting anyone in to play the game with an over the weekend Xeno threat event designed to stress the heck out of the servers, which on one hand is good for getting important data to improve server stability, but on the other hand, as a player, it's not particularly enjoyable to try and navigate a barely functional overstressed universe. This is mostly, again, I think he said due to Xena threat. It is also due to the sheer amount of entities that they have to load. It's server hopping, the server hopping, the server hopping on back end. Um, it's fucking this, that, and the other authentication server. This, that, and the other fucking verification server. It's 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 a it's a joy for CIG. Um. So, yeah, the serviceability has really been a big issue this patch, uh, not just with the free flight, but again with uh, Xena Threat. Compared to my previous experience with 316 and 317 versions of the game, the ability to play has gone downhill massively. I have not played the other two patches that he mentioned. Uh, I started playing again 318 and 318.1, uh, so that opinion I'm going to withhold for other people. Just in the past few days of playing, I've experienced most basic missions breaking to the point of being unable to complete them, Correct. invisible AI enemies spawning in the ground and killing me, bunker I elevators not that. spawning, hangar doors not opening so I can't even get my ship out, quantum travel not working that. like at all, Xeno threat mm. mission progress not working, ship yes. weapons not charging up, dead yes. body markers just not working, nope. weapons and gear I that I equipped that. on my character randomly disappearing, countermeasures not functioning, and countless other issues uh particular with the countermeasures the countermeasures typically for me um are struggle and the countermeasures sometimes will not work at all where it's like the missile will ignore the countermeasures or the countermeasures will not flare up so that the missile it just it's it's a lot of bullshit with the countermeasures and to be perfectly fair, while I have experienced most of these bugs before 318, I usually experience those spread out over a long period of time, not just in one or two play sessions. Now to be totally fair to CIG, the poor experience <coughs> seems to be tied to the health of the server that you're on, and it did seem better before the massive Xeno threat event was triggered. This is partially true. This is also partially false. The reason for this is that see, the server that you're on does help. However, when the player, when it gets to a certain point, it starts to lag out in general. But my point being is that there's a lot of back-end verification persistence shit that they have to deal with 
that are not taking place just on the server that you're on, but also on all their other servers that they have to go through and verify this, that, and the other. So let's say, oh, you're transitioning to one, from one server to the other. Uh, that shard has to carry information from this, that. It's just, it's a big mumbo jumbo deal. But um, he's partially right where the server you're on does matter, but it doesn't make that big of a difference because, well, shit's just broken in general, so. So depending on what server the game throws you into, your experience could range from relatively pleasant to completely unplayable. Partially and I really did try and hop around as best I could. I even logged on while writing this script to see if I could just get anything to work better. And I couldn't even leave my hangar due to the hangar doors just not opening no matter what I try. There is a fix to that. If you are wanting to get the hell out of your hangar, press Alt, Left, Alt, N. That will usually fix the problem. If not, then yeah, you're fine. Right. So for me anyway, it's been quite literally unplayable at points. And certainly times like these, the arguments about CIG's development process begin to heat up. High, high warning, I'm going to be very opinionated when he's done with this because I think so many people are idiots and so many people are dead on. Some arguing that players just need to be more patient as the game is clearly still in alpha, while others point out that they've been waiting 10 years for this game to become more playable. The people that are bitching about it not being out right now because oh it's this that and the other and being patient just shove it it's a fucking alpha game it's a game that you paid to wait for it's an investment get it right like people are in just no like being patient is what you need to do because this game was given a massive task that no other game has ever managed to properly achieve and you're complaining about its current result of its no it's like stop no if you're going to give any feedback just submit an issue council report if it's really bad just go to a support ticket with CAG talk on spectrum talk on the forums but for the love of god don't insult the pure progress that this game has made just because you can't play it right now. That's all, that's really what it comes down to because people are just insane when it comes to the sheer amount of bitching and complaining about right now versus when it's going to get better because it's getting better. They've proven on track that it's getting better. Yes, there are going to be rough patches. Yes, there are going to be wipes. Yes, there are going to be times when the server is down. You need to deal with it. You need to suck it up and you need to relax and you need to wait. This is the biggest, one of the biggest projects in gaming, probably the biggest, um, and we need to be patient. So these people can shut. Since their original pledge, the split development process between Squadron 42's single-player campaign and Star Citizen's multiplayer experience is also frequently brought up, with CIG claiming that most of the progress made in Squadron 42's single-player tech will make its way into the persistent universe, so it's okay for them to focus most of their dev team on the single-player right now. This excuse is not exactly why they're focusing so much on Squadron 42. It's because Squadron 42 needs to get done before the PU does because of lore because squadron 42 after the story is done that's when the pu take place it takes place so that point is partially is yes they're focusing more on squadron 42 right now because they need to get it done because the pu cannot go up properly lore wise until that is done that's the main reason they're focused focus so much dead time and that's yeah no no other point to that other than that now however the rate at which those features and progress are being delivered into star citizen seems to be so slow it's hard to frame this argument in a positive way especially when star citizen's new content is often delivered in extremely rough states again back to my previous point um no more needs to be said. That said, CIG is barreling toward another patch with more content on the way. 
patch 319 just had a large info dump from the closed testing process. Spoiler alert, click away now if you don't want to see spoilers. Highlighting many of the new things that we'll experience. Now, personally, I do have a hard time getting excited about more content when I can barely get my ship off the landing pad, but nonetheless, then progress is being pushed forward even if the game is buggier than it's been in a long time, which makes sense due to the nature of dev teams. The people making the content continue to work on that content even if the server team is struggling to get things stable. Now, one of Star Citizen- It's part of having a persistent game that is supposed to practice being up right now, so they kind of have to practice getting in the swing of things so that when the game actually goes live, it is properly, you know, just in systematic sequence of operation. You know, you get it. This is biggest yearly events, Invictus Launch Week is fast approaching and it should be active in the last week of May. This Give me my player so I'll be happy. Massive event is often accompanied. I still have to buy it though. Made by a free fly for players to try out the game, huge ship sales, usually some new ships being released, plus large fleet maneuvers and showcases from the UEE Navy that are honestly pretty impressive. And I kind of guess it makes sense why CIG would be stressing their server so heavily now to the point of breaking them if the goal is to make Invictus launch week as stable as possible. This is another good point, and he that is a yeah, that's a good point. Good job bringing that up. But I do have a hard time imagining them getting everything ironed out over the course of the next month. Then again, in the past month, the team seems to have fixed the logon issue, so perhaps the next month they can fix most of the stability issue. Partially yes, partially no. So a lot of the issues um, still kind of persist here and there. Uh, they're working on hot fixes for Xenothreat shit, they're working on hot fixes for login issues, they're working on uh, addressing individual players' concerns that might have login issues. Um, for example, the PU had login issues for about 30 minutes this morning at about 9.50 UTC. Um, it, they're still working shit out, so we'll just we'll just see how it goes. Now, regarding the new 319 info dump, players are currently testing the new Loreville cityscape. Spoiler alert! Click away if you don't want to see spoilers. Ape, this is probably the main highlight of the patch, showcasing a complete revamp on one of the first major landing zones of the game, and it does look quite impressive. Gorgeous. Another major update coming with 319 is a new player experience tutorial, something the game has needed for a long time. This will teach players the basics of getting into the verse. And I'm pretty curious to see exactly how this functions, just because Star Citizen is relatively complicated and the tutorial is supposed to cover the first 30 minutes. The other thing they really, really, really need to focus on with this new player shit is the fact that they need to keep new players somewhat safe for those who don't want to directly get involved in PvP right away. Yes, they should have open PvP. Yes, they should have much danger when you leave your station. But not on your first fucking day of playing Star Citizen. No. That needs to be left alone. That needs to let... Okay, I'm going to have a free day. And I'm going to check it out. And I'm going to jump into the danger after. You should not have to deal with griefers as soon as you log into the game like no so i hope cag has ways to prevent that i think they've talked about how they're going to hide new, new players experiencing new experience they're not going to actively show that they're experiencing that they're going to make the missions private this that, and the other um they're probably going to make them unshareable hopefully and maybe they make them skippable who knows but I think players experiencing the new player experience should be left alone. And if they want help, they can ask. And people should not be absolute dicks when it comes to those people asking. Uh, the griefers are really one of the bigger problems in this game that needs to get addressed. And there is a fine line between griefing and PvPing and pirating. PvPing and pirating is completely separate than griefing. Griefing is take it is bullying new players. PvPing is bullying people or excuse me, uh, paddling people that actually can handle a fight or taking someone's cargo who has a ton who can replace their cargo. These new players can't. These new players walking with even two hundred grand, they still can't know. That's gonna turn them off even if they can replace their shit. So People need to leave the new players alone when this shit comes out, unless they're going to be helpful, which there's going to be people who are, and then there's going to be people taking advantage of them. So that's my ask to the community.
Unfortunately, a lot of playing Star Citizen is learning to navigate the bugs, and it would be kind of funny if the tutorial actually addressed these sorts of issues like quantum jumping not working on the first try and stuff like that. So I don't think this is where I'm going to disagree with level cap. I don't think it should mention the bugs directly, but I think it should address that you are walking into a game that is actively in development and you need to be able to identify and report bugs as you see them. It should not specifically identify bugs though, unless the player, maybe, I don't know, but we'll see. I don't think it should directly address bugs though, because um, it may be, may hint at something or turn them off right away. No, I don't think it should do that unless they encountered it, but I don't know. We'll just see how CIG does it. Salvage contracts are coming with 319 as well, offering specific salvage missions versus just roaming around looking for derelict spaceships. This sounds like a good and much needed update. Now, Star Citizen's PvP missions have led to some of the most fun moments in the verse, in my opinion, and there's going to be a new PvP style mission coming to Ghost Hollow on Microtech. The Ghost Hollow location is really cool with a derelict reclaimer and a massive forest, and I think that'll make a great combat zone for some good PvP action. A new neat looking feature using tractor beams to remove ship weapons is also coming in this patch. This is the first step toward ship stripping as internal components are likely coming next. This I think that there's going to be a massive component economy coming up and we need to be extremely mindful of um, just components and their joy and yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they play out with the component economy and how valuable certain components are going to be. I mean, they talked about this in Con42, where I mentioned my previous video, where they're going to have components that are just super valuable and can't be insured. And then it's, it's going to be interesting. So we'll just see how that goes. This should make salvage gameplay far more interesting and allow players who aren't even running salvage ships to potentially get gear and items off of abandoned ships that they find. A few new mystery vehicles are listed in the info dump, which will likely be revealed at the Invictus event. This That'll is cool. pretty typical, but the ships in Star Citizen are usually pretty exciting to check out for the first time, so it is something I'm definitely excited to see. Now, some of the more interesting nuggets of this 319 patch info dump revolve around the Siege of Orison and also some Thing to do with a Bengal carrier docking during Ooh. Invictus. Some new voice lines have been extracted from the game files, indicating that PvP is now being acknowledged at the Siege of Orison event. Yes. I'm not sure if this means it's going to be encouraged, as the line mostly just warns players that other players are killing or hostile at the event, and it also looks like they might be looking to limit the size of the Siege of Orison event so it can fill up and then you won't actually be That'll able be to good. participate. In my opinion, the Siege of Orison does need quite a bit of work to become become a more enjoyable experience for the casual player, and it does seem like CIG is testing stuff here, though some players seem to be upset by the idea of PvP becoming more of a focus. Now there's- Those people need to know. There's gonna be places for you to be safe and do your Care Bear shit, but no. Just, that's all I'm gonna say. No, PvP needs to be an important element of the game and people need to, again, understand CIG's aims for a, a risk-based environment. This is a simulation as well as with game elements, people need to keep their, um, people need to deal with it. There's also a single voice line from this info dump indicating that the Bengal carrier is docking at the Invictus event. And I- That will be extremely exciting. I'm, I can't wait to dock or walk around a Bengal carrier. I don't believe that we've seen the Bengal docked like this before. I could be wrong, but I didn't see anything when Googling this. Now the massive Javelin Destroyer has docked before, which has allowed players to do a limited tour of the inside, which has been really impressive. If something similar like this is offered with the Bengal, that could be absolutely Water. epic. Obviously though, nothing is confirmed on this front, but it would be Stay nice if enough. CIG gave us some surprises to help boost player morale this year. 2023 is turning into a pretty rough year for Star Citizen's playability, with the first major patch for the game being massively delayed, followed up with that patch being insanely unstable once it was deployed. We're heading into May, and the outlook for the rest of the year is kind of up in the air. The I really... Up in the air is an okay way to describe it, but it's also like up in the air is just... I don't know, man. It's... 
they're expecting to have 319 out in the coming months, and then if we're extremely lucky, uh, there's rumors that we're getting pyro near the end of the year or beginning of next year. Um, now, those are extremely up... Those parts are up in the air. I will agree with him. But for the next... I think the performance will increase, but we'll just have to see what the updates look like. And, uh, no, I'm actually going to agree with him. It's up in the air, but, um, to an extent. We know what's coming, but we don't know when, and we don't know what the performance is going to be like. Spoiler alert again, um, 319 is rumored to have some decent performance from the leaks, um, statement stating such, and, um, we'll just have to see. The persistent entity streaming tech that came with 318 has proven to be a massive challenge for the devs, and there seems to be an even bigger challenge down the road as we approach the 4.0 update with server meshing. I think the the last point I'm going to make about the devs that's extremely important is they need to work on transparency for the love of God. Transparency is what makes or breaks a game. They have been extremely transparent so thus far up until the last few years. They need to get that back. They need to stop worrying about what people think when it comes to criticizing their game and they need to get it out and they need to just let people know what's going on and they need to stop taking the negativity and hate as a point to not transmit any transparency. It's no, they need to just man up and post what's going on. They need to post the development updates. They need to post their um, consistent server um, status updates. They need to be digit and schedules and this, that, and the other. They need to be more careful about that. And I think if they keep hiding shit like that the last few months, people are going to stop people are going to start to question what's really going on behind the scenes and we need to be more transparent about that CIG. Please and thank you. Though it's hard to say how far we are from that specific patch as ideally I think they're trying to hit a testing phase before the end of the year. Hopefully. But with all the delays and slowdowns, it's hard to know. Star Citizen is absolutely fun to watch its progress and gameplay from a distance, but getting into the game to actually run missions has been a fairly painful experience for me anyway. Again, I think this varies a lot depending on the server that you join or what part of the world you're playing in, but many players I know personally are taking a break until issues smooth out, which of course is an issue in itself as CIG needs large player counts to stress test the system and find the major bugs. Very true. Hopefully this latest free fly event gave them a lot of useful data for the next patch. I'll personally continue to drop in and test the game as stability improves, so be sure to stay tuned for progress reports on that front. I'd be curious to know what your experiences have been like with the latest patch. Have you hopped on a good servers? Has it been more or less okay or a complete disaster? Let me know in the comments and next up check out this extreme extremely realistic new first person shooter that um all right i think i clo closing opinions the guy level cap did a good job explaining um for the part except for the transparency he forgot to mention that and i mentioned that and just now they need to work on their transparency um besides the point good job level cap for this good video um i will be probably reviewing more stuff of yours in the future and um I hope you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I will see you guys in the next edition of my channel. Peace.